If you are struggling with anything hair, skin, and nails, I have the solution for you. If you've never heard of Wellbell, you have to go check out my Instagram highlight titled Wellbell to see the most insane hair growth and glow up of all time. Not to toot my own horn, but it's pretty wild. So if you're ready to start your glow up journey or are experiencing any hair loss, you've got to try out Wellbell. All you have to do is go to wellbell.com. That's W-E-L-L-B-E-L.com and use code Veronica10 at checkout. That's code Veronica10, V-E-R-O-N-I-C-A-10 at checkout for all things Wellbell. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Martinis and Bikinis. I am your hostess, Veronica Julia, and today I'm sitting down for an episode with Dr. Elizabeth Crane. So Dr. Crane and I had a very unserious, serious conversation because Dr. Crane is a psychotherapist based in Santa Barbara and is a leading expert on highly sensitive people, aka HSPs and empaths. I love having therapists on the show, guys, especially whenever I'm out in LA because there's so many incredibly talented therapists in California. And it's cool because I get to kind of apply my own behaviors, situations, past experiences to whatever the subject matter is and hopefully make it more tangible for you. So we're going to dive into the nuances of self-sabotage and discuss practical strategies for overcoming it. Dr. Crane shares her insights on how HSPs can really embrace their sensitivity as a superpower rather than a setback and focus on self-care and self-improvement, self-awareness, encouraging listeners to live authentically and courageously on the edge. And whether you're an HSP or simply curious about the topic, this conversation offers so many valuable perspectives on thriving in a world that often feels overwhelming. So without further ado, my little teenies, please welcome Dr. Elizabeth Crane to Martinis and Bikinis. Hello, hello, and welcome to Martinis and Bikinis, the podcast for everything under the sun. I am your hostess, Veronica Julia, and I am here to help you navigate your 20s through all things lifestyle, beauty, and fashion. So if you're ready, let's dive into today's episode. Dr. Crane, welcome to Martinis and Bikinis. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited that you're here, and we have a slew of (laughs) different beverages Mm -hmm. in front of us. I am so crazy whenever I'm traveling to do recordings because I'm all over the place and usually I use martini glasses and we have your drink of choice, but I feel like this week has been so chaotic (laughs) and we just like went into the fridge here at the studio and picked out all the things that sounded good. So we have ketones here, which is like good for energy. There's caffeine in it. And then we have this collagen tea. So yeah. This looks to me like a good <laughs> hangover remedy too. Oh, for sure. I'm I'm just feeling all of this. All right. So what do you want to try first? I think maybe we do the tea. Okay. And we can cheers. 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 Thanks for coming on. Thanks. This is the collagen one? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I taste the collagen. Yeah. It's very collagen-y collagen e. <laughs> it's got like a little a bit of a like a consistency to it. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's good though. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I'm peachy. Should we like shoot back the heat? <laughs> okay. Is this gonna hop me up? I think yeah, I think okay. we're gonna get we're gonna get wild. We're gonna right. get wild. It's gonna get really spicy if we if we drink this and then tap into the convo. But All right. Here we go. All right, cheers on this one. Cheers. <laughs> Woohoo <laughs> How do you feel about that? I don't know why I just shot back that whole thing. I really don't think I was supposed to do that. Um, I'm not crazy about that taste. Kind of tastes like Benadryl. It's like bitter, right? <laughs> yeah. You know those drinks with like bitters, like the old fashions or something? Ooh, That's yeah. what I'm getting from that. Anyways. I've Ooh. made a mocktail with that before. I actually had a guest make me a drink. She has like a mocktail making business. Ooh. And I think she used that as like a bitters but anyway, a good sub. Now we're gonna be hyped up. <laughs> I'm and very energetic and focused. It says, so "Oh, perfect! Oh my gosh, I love this for us." <laughs> I know. Well, usually how I like to start these off is something I like to call the roots. So this is an opportunity for you to just share with the audience a little bit more about you, maybe where you're from, your story, how you got to where you are today, anything you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah. So I was born and raised in Los Angeles. And I'm a product of two attorneys, an only child. Whoa. 
Um, a child of the 80s and 90s. Grew up, the world was so different back then. And my journey, I feel like when I think, because it's always like, wait, where do you start? It's always that first memory of mm-hmm. life. You know, when I have people, I'm always asking them about their child. And I'm like, what's the first memory? So for me, it was this feeling I had as a child of always feeling different, but not understanding what that meant and realizing it wasn't until I became an adult and through my journey in psychology of understanding that I was just an empath and I was wired differently. And I, as a child, was highly sensitive. And in psychology, we call it the HSP, the highly sensitive people. And I didn't know I was an HSP until my, you know, becoming, you know, a doctor of psychology. And it's been a long journey and road of just self-discovery and understanding myself and not understanding myself. Also wondering why things f- hit me so hard in life and why I felt the gravitas of experiences from a very early age mm-hmm. and not being able to navigate life, feeling like life was sort of hard, even as like a child of just seeing a kid hurt themselves on the schoolyard and like actually feeling that, right. right? That empath of like, oh my God, that feels so bad. I was feeling their pain almost, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so my journey started there really was this just sort of feeling different, feeling a little alien, like not understanding why, but then w- wanting to understand and wanting to discover myself and wanting to figure out like, what, well, what is that? What is it about me that maybe makes me different, but also maybe as a superpower and how can I parlay this and help the world? And so I got into therapy, mm-hmm. <laughs> a good place to start. Yeah, right? Naturally. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I discovered that I was just a really sensitive person in this planet and I'm that's just me and I'm an empath and call them sentient beings. We have lots of different descriptors nowadays for these types of people and there's so many of us out there. So it led me into psychology and it led me into bookstores in self-help sections from like 12 onward of just wanting to understand and not understanding and wanting this this curiosity of wanting to know about what what made me tick and why I was the way that I was in that way. Yeah. And so that's it. Yeah. And then now I'm a shrink. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I've never heard that term before, actually, which is really wild because I feel like I've had a lot of therapists on the show, but I've never heard the term HSP, highly sensitive person. And the things that you're saying, I can honestly relate myself. So part of me is like, wow, I should probably dissect that a little <laughs> bit more. But yeah, I feel like being an empath really exposes you to so many different energies. Do you find that you're one of those people or maybe you were one of those people that picked up on like anxious energy, for example? Like if somebody was like super anxious around you, like it caused you to be that way or anything of that sort? That's been a huge piece of the journey. And a lot of people are empaths. It's really challenging because we pick up on everything, the sensory around us, and we feel so much out in the world. Going out in the world can be so arduous for empaths Mm -hmm. because we're picking up on all the stimulus around us and the people who, like, we can feel the collective pain weirdly. So when things are going well, it's great, right? Right. You know, and and if if there's a fun party, I'm loving it. But also I can feel if someone's hurting. And that makes me actually quite good at my job, but also it can be really hard at times to go and like be out in the world or f- see someone and be like, I see that person's hurting mm-hmm. and I can feel that for them. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's complicated, but well, I think for empaths, a big thing that I've learned in my journey is self-care. Yeah. There, empaths require more self-care than the average person. Mm-hmm. And that's just just knowing that. Like, you're going to have to retreat at some point. It's great to be... And I'm an extrovert. Look, right. I love going out. I love socializing. But I know when I need to retreat. And I know when you got to go home and recharge the batteries, right? Absolutely. Do you find yourself to be one of those people that really thrives with solo time? You have to kind of schedule that time out just for yourself. Otherwise, you just cannot show up and be like the best version of you. Yes. And I've had to become better at that because burnout is real. It's so real. (laughs) And I have to be real. So what I've had to learn about like battery charging, I Mm -hmm. look at it for everyone. It's like, we all have our batteries and when they they start to go down, sort of like our cell phone, right? Right. And we have to start being mindful of like where our batteries 
charges at. Mm -hmm. And that's a good time to retreat. And yeah. don't go to zero battery where you have to plug it in and you're you're dead. The phone's dead, right? That's right. The, a bad place to be. So yeah, I do I do really love my solo time now. And I think one thing I'm working on and and, and all empaths have to work on is knowing when uh, what charge you have right. to retreat, right? Yeah, to take a break. Yeah, it's interesting because I'm here for a couple of different work projects, but I had a meeting the first day that I got here. And I was so incredibly nervous and anxious talking to this person. And I had no idea why, because before going into the meeting, I felt super confident and just really knew what was at hand. And afterwards, she confessed that she was really nervous going into the meeting. And I was like, wow, that makes so much sense, because I feel like I picked up on that in a way. And we were both just this anxious ball of energy <laughs> together. And then we soon realized, and it was fine after that. And we kind of dealt with it. But it's crazy how you can really pick up on other people's energy. And I'm the same way. I need my solo time. I will not be able to really even show up as any version of myself if I am not taking that time for me and really focusing on my self-care and just taking a time out because I don't know yeah the energies can be really overwhelming at times and sometimes when you have that solitude it's kind of just like a way for you to zone everything out and really just hone in and ground in yourself Mm -hmm. So I love that you mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. And I think I think what's weird about self-care is, number one, I think when we say self-care, it's so broad. Everyone's like, right. what is it? Like, is that taking a bath? Is yeah. that journaling? Like, what, what does that exactly mean, right? And so for everyone, it's different. It's, everyone recharges differently. It is so paramount for our mental health mm -hmm. to find out what we need for self-care, number one, because it's like, some people don't want to take baths and, you know, meditate. That's not their right. thing. That's not how they want to recharge. They want to do something else. Maybe going out in nature or by themselves mm -hmm. and going on a hike. That's how they recharge. So, yeah, I mean, and what you speak to about like the energies, like it's the mirror neurons. Mm -hmm. So it's, we, it's whatever we see back and forth from people, we pick up on it and that it's, everything's energy. Everything is energy exchange. Right. And so that's what happened in that meeting. Yeah. It was just so funny because afterwards we were like cracking up about it. We were like, why were we so nervous? <laughs> and she was actually like, I was late and I was really anxious and nervous and I actually had to really go to the bathroom <laughs> and I had to pee so bad and I was thinking about that the whole time I was cracking up laughing I was like it is just like so funny how much pressure we put on ourselves too to like show up as this perfect version of ourselves and I'm somebody that struggled really really hard with perfectionism and people pleasing in my life so just having those honest conversations with people sometimes is kind of relieving it's like okay I'm not the only one yeah. but I know that that's something that you practice a lot with your patients is perfectionism, people pleasing, self-sabotage. And I kind of wanted to hone in a little bit on self-sabotage today because it's been a theme that I found in a lot of my conversations recently. And I feel like people could really benefit from learning more about it and maybe just noting some of the things that they're doing in their own personal lives that might be some version of self-sabotage. So if you wouldn't mind explaining that a little bit more and what that means, that would be really cool, I think, for the listeners. Yeah. I mean, sort of what it says, self-sabotage. You're right. sabotaging yourself. So you're inhibiting yourself from moving forward in some way in your life. And when we think of self-sabotage, we think of it as sort of stopping us from a good thing, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, we're like about to get a job promotion and people thwart it or they, they self-sabotage that or you're in a relationship with someone. This is like the key thing, right? A romantic relationship, you see self-sabotage show up so much. People will start to take that relationship to the next level. Things will start to get serious. And then one partner will self-sabotage because the intimacy factor kicks in mm -hmm. or something becomes more serious and they're like, oh, like, or maybe they're afraid. I think what's under self-sabotage a lot of time is anxiety and fear. And it's overcoming that mm -hmm. and that piece, if you can jump over that, then you can get to the other side. But a key to self-sabotage to stop it is to get self-aware, like noticing, okay, I'm 
starting to self-sabotage. Right. I need to get like aware of this so I can reel in because I don't want, people don't want to ruin good things. I, I mean, I would hope not. Yeah, I know, I know. And it's so common. I actually remember watching this TikTok or something. It's like this relationship coach. And she talks about how before people get into serious relationships, there's going to be somebody that will back off during that time, like when it starts to get serious, they're going to back off and you kind of just have to let them because some people are really avoidant. And as an anxious avoidant attachment person <laughs> myself, I can definitely see how I've done that in the past. But yeah, it's really wild how people behave in like intimate relationships, especially because it is opening yourself up to this vulnerability that, you know, a lot of people don't get to see in your life it's usually with a romantic partner and it can be really scary and overwhelming totally yeah i mean you're like it's like your heart's on a platter with that other person right but it's like what's on the other side of that too yeah yeah you know there For could sure. be amazing things if you can just get over that hurdle it's it really you know they're saying that life starts at the edge of our comfort zone love that and it's the idea of like well we've all we're all afraid and we've all got anxiety and we've all got insecurities. And if we can just like live on that little edge and say, I'm going to just keep going. Mm -hmm. And that, that little voice inside that says, I'm just going to keep going. Right. Even though I'm afraid, I'm terrified, I'm insecure, I'm all of these things. And that's like, that's how you get to the other side. You For just, sure. it's that little voice that says, I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. It's pushing through. Yeah. I think that that's kind of comforting to hear too, that we all struggle with that. Every single person on this planet struggles with anxiety, stress, all the things. So kind of putting that into perspective just makes it a little bit more approachable. It's like, okay, everybody around me is struggling. <laughs> I need to just put my best foot forward and do something that scares me a little bit, challenges me a little bit. But I remember hearing this, I don't know if it's a quote or if it was just like the story going around social media, but it was this person who was saying that, you know, we spend a, most of our lives with our partner. So choose wisely. We unfortunately, as time goes on and we grow up, we spend less time with our family. So really taking the time to appreciate the time we have with them is really important. But all in all, the people that we spend the most time with is actually ourselves. And that's why loving yourself and self-care and grounding in yourself is like the most important thing. And I feel like that just was like a psh moment for me <laughs> because it just puts so much like thought into who we are and how we play such a role and how we show up for the people in our lives too. But yeah, I feel like that is like super important just like making sure that you know you're really cautious about like the person that you're putting into your life as well and you know who you're making your partner and yeah also just making sure that you are spending time with yourself and yeah learning more about you and exploring that a little bit more throughout life and I think that's what's like so beautiful about life is we get to do that yeah, I mean, so much of it, I think the purpose of life for every soul is to get to know yourself. Yeah. Like we get here and we grow and we evolve and we have all these experiences. Some are good, some are traumatic, right? <laughs> right. But at the end of the day, I think there's so much work to, to understanding oneself, to taking that, looking at ourselves as true investments, like mm -hmm. the greatest investment that any of us are going to make is in ourselves in this life. And then everything else is sort of going to fall into place from there. If you deposit those coins in yourself and your own, you know, and really put that work in, it's going to translate into the relationships. It's going to translate into success and in all aspects of one's life. And you're right. Like the most time you spend is with yourself and it's going to be the greatest love affair of your life yeah. is the, the discovering the love you have for yourself, right? And learning to like yourself. I mean, even if we're just going to just, not, you don't need to like wax poetic about it. But some people, it's, some people are just like, need to learn to like themselves. Yeah. Some people struggle with that. And I was talking to a friend the other day and she was just setting out all these limiting beliefs on the table for herself. And I just reminded her, hey, you wouldn't talk to your best friend like that. 
would you, would you? And she was like, no. I was like, you need to talk to yourself like you're your own best friend because really you are. Yeah. <laughs> you're with yourself 100% of the time. And that relationship that you curate with yourself is the most essential. So talk to her like, you know, she's your best friend. Like if you're just saying bad things about your body or like having body image issues, which we all do. And it's really challenging at times, you know, you have to treat her with respect and just appreciate her for all of the amazing things that she does for you. And yeah, I think just making sure that we're talking to ourselves in a positive way is really important. That's something that I've learned throughout the years is having that mental note of talking to myself in like an intrusive matter very positively and not just saying things out loud and affirming things out loud or journaling about it, really starting to believe it and changing my mindset. I think mm -hmm. that's the most challenging part is actually changing your mindset. And I would love like just some tips on how people can start to really overcome that. Yeah. I mean, look, we all have you know, what do they say? There's like 12 different people inside. I don't know if that's yeah. true, but we have a lot of voices inside this right. we know, right? And we have different iterations of ourselves. We have inner children. We have inner teenagers. We have current versions of ourselves mm -hmm. that are walking around. And so they all sort of show up at different points in our lives. And we have the, that, that, I don't know, we can call it the inner critic, yeah. Right. It's that one that's like, oh, this is great. This is going to be so good for you. Oh, no, no, no. You can't do that. No, 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 no. I, I don't. I don't think you're prepared for it. Mm -hmm. It's that self doubt voice, the critical one. I think everyone has it to some degree. Mm -hmm. And so there's another voice though that I'm always like, "Where's the cheerleader? Where's the one inside that believes in yourself?" Because there's definitely that voice too. And those voices need to make friends, and they need. And sometimes that cheerleader needs to be like, "No, no, no, stop! You got to stop that inner critic." and talk back to it. You don't want to be at war with yourself, but you definitely want to put some people like on the back burner, that voice on the back burner inside that that inner critic shouldn't be running the show. Right. And saying like, well, there's this other part of me that does believe in myself, that does know myself, and I'm going to challenge that. Because so much of therapy, if people come in to do work, is challenging. We call them schemas, right? These mm -hmm. are the negative beliefs that we have about ourselves. And for everyone, it's different. It's I'm not important or I don't matter. Or, I'm not lovable or whatever the schema is. It's about learning to challenge that and bring in the other voices inside that live there that can sort of mitigate it. Right. Absolutely. I'm watching this show right now called Shrinking. Oh, okay. Have you watched it? I've seen like one episode. Yeah, it was yeah. It with Harrison Ford. It's with Harrison Ford yeah. and Jason Segel. I love Jason Segel. It's so funny. I like watched all of How I Met Your Mother like seven times. It's like one of my favorite TV shows of all time. But yeah, it's interesting because there's like a lot of self sabotage that happens in the show, and there's also like a lot of decision fatigue that happens as well which I find interesting, like people just like <laughs> feeling like they can't make a decision. And maybe that causes like some sort of halt for them in their lives or, you know, things can go in a positive direction, but because they're not making the decision, it's challenging them a little bit. But that's definitely something that I've struggled with before. I'm like so indecisive. D indecisive? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's funny. I have this one girlfriend and she's always like, do you want to go shopping? I'm like, okay, but I know when we go, it's going to be indecision after indecision about right. the outfits. And then she brings me along because she's like, you pick, <laughs> right? But I really want her to pick. Right. The goal of this is like, it's a teaching moment, right? No, I want you to pick the outfit that you feel good. And I'm here to help like corral it. Mm -hmm. But I do, I see it, you know, that this, it's like paralysis almost, mm -hmm. this inability to make decisions. And I always say to people that come in, and they have these big life decisions. They're like, oh, I don't know what to do about this with my life. I'm like, well, if you don't know, don't do anything and just wait. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good course of action of like, if something's not clear to you, it'll become clear down the line. Just don't do anything. But then you also see that the decision paralysis is a real mental thing that mm -hmm. goes on with people where they just sort of can't get out of their own way, I guess it is. Right. And they can't, it's like in an inability to move forward with your life. There's this fear of moving forward, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And it goes, and it's just, you know, it might be the dress in the store, but it might be big things too. 
Right. A lot of people do struggle with that. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I've definitely struggled with <laughs> making decisions and being indecisive in my life. But I think when it comes to self-sabotage, it's interesting because particular people in my life that I've talked to usually have like some sort of childhood history with people maybe saying they're not good enough or if they do something really great, they're like, oh, well, so what? You know, like they don't really celebrate them. And for me, I guess in my own personal life, I kind of in my early childhood I felt like I had a lot to prove to the people in my family and in my life. So I always went out of my way to like go above and beyond and like almost exhaust myself because I felt like I had this like big picture that I had to prove to everybody that I was like capable of. And, you know, I was kind of like the black sheep of my family in a way. I was kind of on the outskirts. I'm like the youngest of four and we have like a pretty large age gap. And I think that was part of it too, you know, just like feeling like I had to step into this like role of maturity a little bit earlier on. And yeah, I feel like I always was like straining myself to do things perfectly. And that's where the perfectionism kind of stepped in and the people pleasing. But the people that I've talked to about this that kind of had familial situations where people were kind of like putting them down, it almost created this sense of, oh, well, if they're not going to appreciate what I'm trying to do, then I'm just not going to do anything at all because I'm scared mm -hmm. of failure. Mm -hmm. Do you find that a lot in your practice with clients coming to you, that that's something that is a common characteristic? It's interesting because I think a lot of times the fear of failure is actually sort of cloaked with the fear of success. Mm -hmm. I'm always wonder, and I'm I, I sort of like, I'm curious about this, is, is people's fear of failure more of a motivating factor or people's fear of success more of a motivating factor. I always wonder how the two go hand in hand and how it impacts people and, you know, this need to prove, right? This need to demonstrate to others that are we're worthy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've, I've been thinking a lot about this, right? It's can't, this came up, this idea of belonging right? recently has come up. It's been like a theme one of my girlfriends called me. We were reminiscing about high school, everyone's favorite time in life. And <laughs> I asked her, I said, does anyone ever feel like they belong in high school? I'm like, did even the cool girls feel like they belonged? And she's like, well, does anybody ever feel like they belong? Like We were, we were sort of like rolling this idea around. And then I, I started thinking about it. I'm like, we externalize so much of our worth based on the opinions of others, like mm -hmm. our family our friends, Instagram, whatever it is. And it's it's really like, actually, I thought about this. Our belonging is non-negotiable. Yeah. We belong to ourselves and we had belonging from day one. We just got this all wrong because we put it out there in high school and we had everyone else determine it for us. Do we belong? What group are we part of? But it's like, no, everybody belongs. We belong to ourselves. And if we can get to that place of like, that's like a non-negotiable item and really rethink this idea of belonging. That, you know, it's really about our relationship to ourselves. I love that. Belonging is non-negotiable. Because, yeah, I feel like we put so much stress on feeling like we're a part of something. And I think that's why community is so big and making sure you have a community is so important. But the, at the end of the day, like, if you don't feel like you belong in yourself, then you're not going to feel like you can belong anywhere. So I think that's, like, super important. And it's something that, yeah, we put, like, a lot of impact on is just feeling this need to fit in and in reality I don't think there's really a need to fit in it's and what like, does it even mean what yeah what does that mean <laughs> does someone explain it to me I guess it's like just like wanting to feel accepted yeah but it's interesting because going back to limiting beliefs I had a therapist once tell me that you know we all have those like 12 voices like you mentioned but right. she was like next time you're like feeling that side of you kick in that's telling you like oh you know you're not worthy or you can't do this or whatever that feeling may be you should name it mm. so like yeah karen's being such a bitch today <laughs> like <laughs> like let's say i'm like putting myself out there for a new project and i'm like no 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 like i'm not good enough for that like you know maybe whenever i hit this accolade i can like kind of start inching towards that obviously a limiting belief hitting and you know maybe her name's karen <laughs> 
Right. Parents being a bitch. Yeah. You have to like shut her up sometimes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so then who's the one that talks back to Karen? Right. I feel like it almost just makes it more unserious. It's like, oh, like, why am I like putting so much pressure on this? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's just a part of us. We have to recognize there's, we're so, humans are so complicated and we're messy. Right. right? Once we can just establish that, then we can sort of take the pressure off of the whole like, situation. Like nothing makes sense. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we're all just figuring it out as we go. Right. right? And, you know, it's a journey. Like, enjoy the journey. Take the pressure off. Karen's really loud and annoying today. We're going to just <laughs> shut her up. Bring in, like, Charlotte or somebody else mm-hmm. that's a little nicer, a little nurturing, yeah. you know. Tell her it's going to be okay. You know, whatever it is, so that we can make peace with ourselves. Isn't right. that just so much of it? It's just yeah. making peace with all these parts of ourselves, the parts we like, the parts we don't like the things that happened to us from childhood, really just reconciling all of it at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that you have been living in peace. (laughs) We were talking about how you made the move to Santa Barbara during the pandemic, right before the recording started, and how you just wanted to be out in nature and like how healing that's been for you. And I I think that's amazing how you kind of just like took control and you were like, you know what, I'm just going to add some more peace to my life amidst all of this chaos. And I feel like, yeah, just like making those decisions, choosing yourself and what's important to you in life is so important. You know, it's funny because I... I think we have more agency than we give ourselves credit. A lot of people will be like, well, I'm stuck in this job I don't like, or I can't get out of this relationship. And it's, it's like, well, yes, you can. Right. You know, it's all for the taking. You can really have, maybe you can't have everything you want, but you can have a lot of things that you want and you can go and create that. It's that sort of obstinate thinking that gets in the way. And it's like, well, if you want to go do that go do that. What's yeah. stopping you? But we, we stop ourselves a lot and, and we see that so much. And people love to complain about the things in their lives that aren't working and then say that there's no way out. And I always like to challenge that. I'm like, is that really true? Yeah. Is well, there no way out? Going back to the show, Shrinking, which you should keep watching it, by the okay, way. It's I so wonder. good. It's like such a good feel good show. But there's like a lot of different themes that I feel like are really important, which has been like really, really cool to watch but there's this one character who is wanting to propose to their partner and he goes to his friends and he's like yeah I'm gonna propose it's gonna be great and they just did not say anything he's like why like why aren't you happy for me why aren't you congratulating me they're like this is like the seventh time that you've done this like that you've told us this like we just like don't know if you're like really gonna do it So, you know, the whole episode, you're like, oh, he's like totally going to do it. And he goes to the jeweler and picks out the ring and he's like, okay, so do you want it? And he's like, I absolutely do not. Like he's shaking his head. (laughs) Yes. But he's like, no. And then towards the end of the episode, he actually does. But yeah, it's cool that, you know, you got to see that whole journey of just like the self-sabotage. And I, I think it's something that we all do. We all give ourselves these like really high expectations and we want to commit. We want to do these things. And there's some tug that pulls us down sometimes. And yeah, it was, it was cool to see that from like a cinematic perspective, but yeah, I don't know. I've definitely found myself doing that at times. And I think high expectations can be really great. You know, setting goals can be amazing and having aspirations is so essential, but Do you find that sometimes, let's say it's like with your clients or even with yourself, if you like set these high expectations, I'm a very visual person. Mm -hmm. I like kind of like start to imagine it and I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's going to be so great. Like it's going to be beautiful. I have all these ideas for how it's going to turn out and then it doesn't turn out like that at all. And I'm like disappointed. I feel like that is something that I struggle with is just like over like analyzing and putting this like hyper fixation on like certain things and then getting really let down when it actually happens. So I think it's almost like this futuristic response to like the things that are going on in my life. It's funny because they've done studies on this. I think they did this on athletes and they said, you know, when they win like the World Cup or the US Open or whatever, they have this, it's going to be like the best moment of yeah, their life, right? Yeah. Like this is, this is it. Like we, that's all you do. You work your whole life to get there to that moment. Mm-hmm. And they asked them like, how did it feel when you won the US? I mean, this is the best thing ever, right? And they were like, well, I, in my mind, it actually felt 
better than when I <laughs> won because I hyped it up so much, right? right? And and you know, so much of life is like that, like this party, this amazing party you're gonna go to, and like I can't wait. And then you go to the party, and you're like, yeah, it was good, it was fine. But you know, it's that hype in the mind's eye of things, and and how we sort of narrate and play it out in our, and then life is sometimes a little more banal. You know, it's just sort of, eh, it was fine. It was okay. It's hard to live in the present. And I, I definitely struggle with it. I'm sure we all struggle with it. I, I need to like really appreciate the now mm-hmm. and what's happening right now in front of my eyes. We're here in the studio yeah, <laughs> drinking and, our keto, right? having so much fun. Yeah. And like, maybe this is as good as it gets. And that's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm here for it. I yeah. love it. Actually, the lesson is to just manage expectations. Right. And just like know. put yourself out there. But I know we were talking a lot about manifestation before we started rolling and how we're both very like spiritual and into crystals. And I would just like love, I, you know, again, I think it's really important to like visualize and manifest. And I would love to hear more about like your manifestation practices because it is a really beautiful thing. I'm not trying to like put down like creating high expectations for yourself yeah. because I think that's what like gets us to achieve really great things. And every amazing thing that's happened in my life is because I've like literally visualized it and I've manifested it. I've wrote it down on paper or, you know, I've done some sort of like manifestation meditation. I'm like really into like all of the spirituality, like openings and realms. And oh, I love it. Yeah. Like they had like the Lionsgate portal a couple yes. months ago. I was like so into that. I like eight, talked eight. about that. Oh yeah. my God. I talked about that <laughs> endlessly on the show, <laughs> but I yeah, I'd love to hear more about your practice with that. You know, you don't want to set yourself up for failure. Like have, uh, yeah, have high hopes for yourself. Right. As, be aspirational. I think it's all great. I think everyone should go out there and strive to achieve all the things that they want. And also know it's like, it's for the taking. If you want it, you can do it. Get out of your own way might be the hardest part of that. But the, one of the things I like to do with manifesting is concretize. We were, we were saying like, don't overdo it in your mind, but actually maybe <laughs> you should, <laughs> maybe you should. So when you are manifesting, what you do is you complete it in your mind. You say, thank you so much universe for giving me that job promotion. I love my job. It's so fruitful. I'm so happy here. And I'm so grateful that you gave that to me. It's complete. Mm -hmm. You completed that in your mind. And Mm -hmm. so that's part of manifestation practice. It's that, but really what that's giving and offering is this belief that you can complete that even if it hasn't happened yet. You make it hot, like you make it complete in your mind and you talk to the universe. I, I like to talk to the universe. Yeah. You know, I'm the crazy person out in the world talking by myself. So, you know, thank you, universe, for this. Yeah, we were talking about that. I was like, I'm not one of those people that talks to myself. And I kind of feel like I should. <laughs> I feel like I should get into that. Well, the spirit guides are listening. Yeah. So they're like in a boardroom just waiting for all of us <laughs> to uh, talk to them. They're waiting. They're uh-huh. ready. And, you know, you just tell them what you're needing or what you're needing support in. And they're Mm -hmm. there for us. You know, that's the spiritual piece and manifesting piece, right? If you're needing support in something, ask for it. Hey, spirit guides, I need support in this right now. Help me, you know? And they're there. They'll get get the board meeting ready. They're there for you. They're all working for you. Obsessed. But you got, but the thing, the deal is, you can't, they can't read your mind. So you have to talk to them. <laughs> I, yeah, that's a practice that I need to instill into my daily, my day to day, because I feel like I'm so up here and it gets overwhelming. So I just yeah. need to like, let it out. It's kind of like crying, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like, you just need to get it out. It's like almost like an energetic release of just speaking out your thoughts. Well, we do get heady and, we, and I think we have like thousands of thoughts every day that are just flowing through mm-hmm. us. And some of them are, worth paying attention to and maybe some are not, you know, I don't know. Remember like whenever I was first getting into meditation, I thought that you just like had to be completely silent, have no thoughts. And I remember I was like probably like 10 years old, like sitting in my room and I'm like, I'm going to meditate for the first time. And I like put on this like YouTube meditation thing. It was like YouTube had just came out and I like sat there and I was like, stop thinking, stop thinking. And I was like trying not to have any thoughts at all, which is impossible. Totally. And I, it's so funny looking back on that now and like my perspective towards meditation. But something that helped me was like whenever negative or intrusive thoughts would come in, like thinking of it as like a cloud, like, oh, it's just like floating away. 
And I feel like that's how a lot of our thoughts are. It's just like, oh, okay, on to the next. Mm-hmm. We call it the watchful observer. Ooh. Yeah. I like that. So it's that part of us, it's sort of our higher self mm-hmm. that can look down on ourselves and say, okay, like what's going on down there? Yeah. What are these thoughts? Like you said, on the cloud sort of floating. Yeah. And what's great about the watchful observer is that it's non-judgmental. Mm-hmm. It's just there to be like, okay, this is happening. That's happening. I'm noticing this, noticing that. And so that takes a lot of the charge out of things because so much of what rules us as humans are our emotions <laughs> And our emotional states dictate so much. But if we can get to that sort of higher self and that watchful observer, then we can take some of the charge out of all those emotional responses and gain some clarity on yeah. what we, what, how we need to move forward in our lives. Yeah, yeah. And like going back to like the higher expectations and the manifestation aspect of it all, I actually think that, you know, setting those high expectations for yourself, it is so essential. Mm-hmm. And even though it like may not look how you expected it once those manifestations come into picture, it's still happening. And like, how grateful should we be for those things? You know, just because it didn't look exactly how we pictured it, it's still happening. And I think that that's something to express extreme gratitude towards. So I think that's, (laughs) I just had that thought. Yeah, (laughs) for sure. I mean, it's amazing when you can look back and be like, I created that for myself. Yeah. I did that for myself. I was able to manifest that for myself. Right. right? Be- and that and that really speaks to the power of our thoughts and our energy. Mm-hmm. And we're way more powerful than we think we are and we give credit to. And like I said, it's all there for the taking. Whatever you want, go get it. You know, right. I always tell people like if you want something, go get it. If it's yeah. not working, you know, don't put absolute I think a big thing too is to not put absolutes on things like I can't do that I should do that I must do that it's like well listen the timeline's going to be what it's going to be shoot for the goal and give yourself you know some leeway on all of these things in life because it's going to just unfold how the universe wants it to mm. and the lessons will be there and the and look at it more as like a journey and take I think the thing too is people put a lot of pressure on life yeah Life gets like a lot of gravitas at times, right? right? Everything feels very serious, right? Yeah. By the time you walk into a therapist's office, it's really serious. Yeah. So it all feels like it's the weight of the world, right? And it's like, well, maybe just paradigm shift that a little bit and have some faith that, yeah, the goals are there, the aspirations are there. I've got the power is there. We're so much, we're so powerful. But we're also like, sometimes we're getting in our way and we're putting too much pressure on things and too many absolutes. And maybe to just loosen the noose and the reins on things would be helpful. And then you can manifest everything. For sure. Yeah. I love just saying that life is so unserious. (laughs) It is so unserious. Like we're literally on a floating rock. We have no idea what's going on. We don't know what's happening next. You know, you just kind of have to do what feels right and really just hone in on your values, who you are, and then just, you know, live life, live a little. (laughs) I swear if I could go back to my 20 year old self, that would be what I would say to her. Like chill out girlfriend. Yeah. It's all going to be good. You know, don't make it so serious because it's, it's going to, it's going to work out. Right. I have so many friends that, you know, I grew up in Louisiana and A lot of people will kind of start this next chapter of life a little earlier than, you know, the people in New York are. So, you know, I've had like two different cultures in my 20s. I went from Louisiana to D.C., kind of exposing myself to the East Coast and then New York, which all three have like very different cultures. But yeah, it's funny because I have a lot of friends who, you know, got married right out of college, started having kids, which I'm so incredibly just blessed to like have those people in my life and be able to like be around their kids and just celebrate them. And then, you know, I have my friends in New York who were like, I'm staying single forever. And I'm like, okay, yeah, go off queen. Like, you do. Yeah. <laughs> And then I have friends that are like kind of struggling and they're like, oh, when is that time going to happen for me? And, you know, they're kind of just like waiting for like that next chapter. And yeah, I think the advice that I always try and give them is just like, don't put so much pressure on it. Like, Things are going to happen the way that they're meant to happen. And either way, we're going to live a really beautiful life. And 
I feel like the moment I stopped putting pressure on things, just not romantically necessarily, but like career or within friendships or anything relating to life in general, I found so much happiness and content within me and what I was doing to create a beautiful life for myself. Easier said than done too, right? It's the yes, idea of- just, For sure. Yeah, like <laughs> for it, sure. It, we want things now. We're like, yeah. let's be honest. If you want something, there's, there's that that inner voice that's like, no, 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 I need that now. Yeah. It's it's sort of like greedy and it's 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 ready and it wants it now. It's yeah. not, it doesn't, it's impatient, right. right? But there is this other side to this, which is like, okay, trust the process. Right. That's huge. It's there. It's, you know, if we can just trust the process and that's that really comes down to like, faith in ourselves and believing in ourselves and believing in the universe and and goodness and knowing that it's all gonna work out and be okay in the end yeah no absolutely absolutely and there there's been times in my life where I was like not in that mindset at all and I don't know what it was that kind of just like flipped that for me but I really think it's because like I truly feel tapped in and <laughs> I know we were talking about the universe and just like aligning with that and looking for signs. And I look at angel numbers oh, or I'll I see like too. animals in the wild where I'm like, oh my God, like this is the sign. <laughs> and I know I sound crazy and like people will probably be like rolling their eyes, but it's so true whenever you start to feel that magnetic energy towards just all of these little things in life that are leading us towards like this sense of self or greater purpose or just giving us validity and like whatever is happening in our now is really fulfilling. I think there's signs every day yeah. and I think the universe sets us up for things to come into our path and it's like, well, then it's up to us to act upon that. Yeah. Right? Like the angel numbers. I love angel numbers. Me too. What's your angel numbers? I so two ten's been showing up a lot for me lately. <gasps> really? I, I was buying my girlfriend some books to send to Texas and it was two ten zero zero. And the girl at the checkout's like, oh, that's like, you need to look that angel number up. That's serious. And my girlfriend's having some health issues and it was like a whole care package I was buying. So it was sort of a meaningful purchase. And then I looked at the whole thing and I was like, okay, this totally makes sense. This is the universe telling me something wow yeah so is they, they're there yeah well, how do yours show up i get two 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 all the time okay. like in parking garages or anytime i look at the time i'm like this is weird like i'll see two 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 like multiple times a day like twice a day obviously yeah. that's all i can see um, I, I see four 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 a lot too i think that has a lot to do with like career but yeah i see those two all the time like yeah. twos and fours on repeat mm -hmm. but yeah I have so many friends that have like so many different ones that they see. And I always tell them to look them up. I'm like, look it up. What does it mean? And no. like, You're crazy. I'm like, no, I'm not. And the animals <laughs> are real too. I recently saw a fox like cross my path Whoa. and looked me right in the eye. And I was like, oh, that's like for sure a spirit guide trying to tell me something. So then of course I look up the spiritual meaning of fox uh -huh. and it's a whole thing. And I was like, this is so resonant for my life right now. Um, and I was like, I was like, thanks universe. Like I actually yeah. needed that thanks, reminder. Yeah. yeah. I actually, it's funny how I formulate this podcast because I do it in seasons, but I actually just like, will kind of take like a two week pause. Like every time I start a new season and it's usually like around a particular number, but mm -hmm. whenever I'm starting to feel like this sense of change or this sense of like needing to pause, it's like really overwhelming and 37, it was like my first season. I got into 37 episodes and I was like, I was in Europe actually. And I was like, you know what? Like, I feel like this is like a time I really need to take for myself. And there is an episode that I could push out and rush it and put it out there. But for some reason, like I feel this sense of like needing to like sit and like take a breather and then like regroup in like two weeks and start season two. So I looked up what the angel number was and it literally was like, this is a time for reflection, a time to pause. Like, this is what your wow. guides are telling you. And I was like, I'm going to do the whole podcast like this now. <laughs> so I like recently started season three and it was like seven, seven, where I was like feeling this like need to like, you know, start over, start, start a new chapter of the show. And yeah, again, it was like, the words that I needed. And I was like, yeah, I love this. I love that I'm, I'm like formulating this within angel numbers, but I think that they can be really significant and it can teach us a lot about our own 
understandings of things. And Mm -hmm. for me, like I needed to hear that I needed a break, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. It's that validation from the universe that sometimes we need. We know it inside. Right. I think actually like we, we actually have most of the answers. We just have to access them. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes we need that, that like reminder from the universe that we're on the right path or that we're making the right decisions. And so that's cool. Yeah. I love it. Are you into human design? A little bit. I've dabbled. Yeah. What's your number? I'm a generator. Oh, oh, the, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm a generator too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yes. I think that's the most common. It is. I thought I was a manifesting generator for a bit, but I was telling people the wrong thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then found out I was a generator. But we're the people that make things happen. Yeah, we're essential. Yeah, I like love all of that stuff. So there's the num. There's your life number. You take like your birthday in the year, uh-huh. and you sort of calculate it, and then you'll get your life number. I think it's. It's not, it's not human design. It's the other one. It's, it's evading me at the moment, but someone who's listening to this will know <laughs> and then they'll, they'll fill us in, but you'll get your number and it's your life number. So like mine's eight and it has this whole write up on like how you should be living your life and all these tenants of you sort of like astrology, I guess. Oh, cool. That's really cool. What's it, your sign? I'm a Scorpio. Oh my God. People are afraid of Scorpios. Yeah. My dad was a Scorpio. Yeah. I love Scorpios. I actually think we get a bad rap. We're Pretty cool people. I, I think know. y'all are really cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I have a lot of friends that are Scorpios too. And mm-hmm. they're like the funniest people that I know. I, I feel like Scorpios are like characters. Like, yes. Yeah. I love Very it. passionate. Yeah. yeah. But that's important. It is important. Yeah. We well, need all of it. What are you? I'm a Capricorn. We also get a bad rap. Everybody gets yeah, a bad rap. Yeah. Everyone gets a bad rap, right? <laughs> we can like, we can pick apart all these signs, but also it's like you have your natal chart. So there's other signs in there. So you're not any, like all of anything, right? Yeah. Your, your moon could be something different, your sun. Right. So. Exactly. Yeah. There's, so, there's so much to it. We can't concretize, concretize anything here, okay? No, <laughs> we're talking about crystals too. We're like, oh, <laughs> we're like giving we're, LA. To we're covering <laughs> out all of it. Yeah. But I was just like talking about crystals and how I'm like getting into it. And I've kind of always been into it, but like there's people that are really into it. You were like, you should have a gemologist on. I was like, I should, because I didn't realize how many books are out there on different crystals, all of the meanings, significance, the energies associated and, you know, how you can utilize them in your life. And I feel like the same goes for astrology too. Like there's so much information out there. It's crazy. Yeah. But I'm sure that you have like a lot of clients that like dabble with that too. And like try to make sense of certain things with, you know, astrology. And I I love it. I think it's so cool. It's so cool. (laughs) There's a really good book called Crystal Muse next time you're in a crystal shop. And it just sort of goes through all the different crystals and the meanings behind them. Like, for example, um, there's one that I have in my house that's for communication. And I put it in the Ooh. center of my house because I'm like, everyone needs to learn to communicate well, yeah. right? So you can use them for different things. They all have different meanings. It's, it's so cool. I would love to talk about this really quickly because I know at the beginning of the episode, we were talking about like self-care and like kind of the cliche things associated with that, like baths and journaling. What are some other ways that people can really practice self-care and go from like self-sabotage to like this version of like self-improvement or like self-healing or like self-validation through self-care? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think one of the biggest things to do for self-care is to go to therapy. Yeah. I'm a big proponent of therapists. Yeah. I am a therapist, right? So <laughs> like, come see me. <laughs> I'm like, go to therapy. Listen, it's, and everyone's like, well, who's therapy for? I'm like, well, it's for everybody. Yeah. It's so important for self-awareness. It's taught me so much about myself and it is so powerful. So that's number one. Yeah. Go, and, and listen, and, and so some people are like afraid of therapy, right? There's those people too. They're like, I'm not ready to go to therapy. I'm like, okay, fine. No problem. So my my other way, you know, my other advice is like, okay, so just go to a bookstore then and go to the self-help aisle and see what catches your eye and and maybe you start there. Start yeah. by reading a book. If you're too afraid to get into a therapist's office, which a lot of people are afraid because it's self-examination and, you know, it takes courage to go to therapy. So some people are not there on their journey yet. I don't knock it. It's fine. Maybe they'll get there down the line. So go to the bookstore Get, go into this, find yourself in the self-help aisle. Psychology aisle is good. Anything that sort of gets this sort of personal development curiosity peaked. I think curiosity is so key mm-hmm. to self-care too, because it's like, how do I need to take care of myself? Learning to be able to take care of ourselves is really important. And it's not always apparent for people. They're like, oh, well, I need to do X, Y, and Z. And it's like, well, maybe those 
things aren't working. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, maybe some people aren't like meditative types or bath types or some people, it, everyone's different. We're all wired differently. So you have to find what self-care regimen and routine works for you. Therapy is a good place. Books are a really good place. And there's so much out there. It's really about like what nourishes the soul and at the end of the day, it makes you feel like you're recharging and tending to yourself. That's what self-care really right. is. Yeah. I love everything that you said. I feel like there's so oh, much synergy. I know. I love yeah. this conversation. Yeah. Like we have like so many similar interests and, you know, I hope people are able to just even get like a little bit out of this conversation. Maybe there was like one piece of something that we threw out there that they want to investigate a little bit more and be a little bit more curious about and look up and maybe even go to your page and see what you have written and you're writing so many articles. So yeah, <laughs> look a into lot that. Of pop culture, modern problems out there. Yeah. yeah, but I love it. And it's like a great way to kind of just like make it tangible. But I do have one last question for you. Okay. So I ask all my guests this and it's really funny because everybody has such a different answer. But... If you were to drink a martini in a bikini, where would you be and what would you be drinking? Oh, that is a, that is a, that's the best question, really. Because there's, so <laughs> there's so many places I would like to be. The best version of self-care, so if you some, ask me. It dep- you know, and it's funny because it's like depends on the day. Like some days I'd like to be in a cold, dark room with a dirty martini, like dry ice and just alone and quiet and sip it alone. But then some days I'd love to just rock that bikini on the Bahamas uh-huh. um, with a nice like tropically sugary one and pretend I'm never going to get that hangover. <laughs> so can I give two answers? Yes, absolutely. They both sound phenomenal <laughs> and I, I will be there. That sounds incredible. <laughs> I need that right now. Well, actually, yeah. no, we're in sunny LA. We're living right. Best life. Sometimes I just want to be Carrie Bradshaw again, honestly, and drink a Cosmo. Oh my god! Back to basics. You, you can you can do it all, right? It's <laughs> the like world is your oyster, <laughs> right? Like I said, it's all for the taking. You can have whatever you want. You can exactly. have whatever routine you feel like. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, I am so grateful for you, and this was such an amazing conversation. And you're such an inspiration, and you're helping so many people. And just by having this conversation, I hope it opens the door for people to be a little bit more curious about their own, you know, limiting beliefs and maybe ways that they're self-sabotaging and how they can lead themselves to a life of self-healing and self-love. And I really appreciate it. So if you want to share how people can like be friends, how they can work with you, how they can stay up to date with everything that you're doing, if you have any exciting things coming up. Yeah, they can find me online at Dr. Elizabeth Crane. I'm also on Instagram, Dr. Elizabeth Crane. It's Elizabeth with an S. And yeah, there's, there's, I'm always coming out with different articles on pop culture things and modern problems. And I do like to tackle that because I think that's really uh, salient with the here and now of what people are wanting is, you know, the quick fix answer for what's happening Mm -hmm. right now. And so, yeah. Yeah, I'm out there. I love it. I feel like this was like the most unserious, serious conversation ever. (laughs) And I feel like sometimes when you sit down with like a therapist on a show like this, like, you know, you can feel like a little serious, but you just brought such an inviting and friendly energy to the show today. So I really appreciate it. And I'm sure you bring that into all of your sessions as well. So I'm sure people could really benefit from working with you and learning more about your services. So I thank you. And I'm very appreciative and this was so much fun. (laughs) It was great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, cheers. Cheers. If you guys like this episode, please feel free to like, rate, and subscribe to Martinis and Bikinis on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I really just love when you guys leave reviews or ratings on Spotify. It helps the podcast keep going and just like makes me feel really good. So if you guys don't mind just like taking a minute to just before you close out to give it a rating or give a review or just show some love. Even if you want to send us a message, let us know what your favorite points of the episode were. That would be great. But yeah, I am so appreciative of you guys and am just absolutely obsessed with each and every one of you. So (laughs) love you guys. I'll see you next week. Cheers.